Hello everyone, this is Rashida. Welcome to my channel. My today's video is going to be on LM plot in Seaborn. What is LM plot? It is the combination of red plot and facet grid. That means LM plot itself has the parameters of facet grids. Okay, and uh, I have a separate video on the red plot. If you ha haven't seen it yet, please feel free to check it out. I have the link in the description box below. Okay, let's start. Import Seaborn as SNS. Okay, now I'm going to use the tips dataset. So SNS.load dataset tips. Oh, sorry. Tips. Okay, now tips. This is the dataset. We have the total bill, tip amount, sex, that means gender, male or female, smoker, yes or no, day, the day of the week time lunch or dinner and size is uh, one two three four or five the size of the crowd okay we will start with the most basic lm plot sns dot lm plot in x direction i'm going to use total bill and in y direction i am going to use the tip and then data tips because the name of the data set is tips, we put it in the tips variable. Okay, so this is the LM plot. It looks exactly like a normal rec plot because we didn't use any of the uh, facet grid parameters here yet. Okay, so if uh, you don't know or you haven't seen my rec plot video before, so this is the rec plot, it's actually a scatter plot just with a straight line that best fits the dots okay and we have the confidence band by default it is 95 percent confidence interval but if you want you can change it like if i want i can put ci75 you can see the confidence band is much more narrow here okay so it depends if you want it um, and but if you are not very familiar with confidence interval or confidence band, please uh, ignore it for now because uh, that's the, not the scope of this video. We are only going to focus on LM plot here, okay? And you can understand this regression line, uh, I'm sure. This regression line that, be that best fits these dots, okay? Okay, now I'm going to actually copy and paste. Copy and paste okay i will keep the default confidence band here i will use a hue parameter here i will use hue uh, maybe the time okay you can see if i use hue time we have uh, different colors for different times so we have only two times here lunch and dinner time so and you can see the different regression line for a different uh, time as well so and we can use some good style parameters so if you want you can use different markers for different times i will use diamond and um, diamond and cross okay you can see we have different markers now if i want it i could use the color palette different colors uh, blue and red okay you can see different colors we specified blue and red all right now i'm going to use the facet grid options the facet grid parameters that is in the column value i'm going to use the day so if i do that you can see i have uh, each individual column for each individual day okay look at but it's not very clear i will change the size height 4 and aspect 0 0.7 okay if i do that so it's much more clearer okay so we have individual day and each column represents one day and we have total bill per tip and we still have the segregated uh, data for time so we have different colors you can see saturday and sunday we have only dinner time data and for thursday we have mostly lunch data only one dot you can see a very 
light one dot red uh, red dot for dinner time and for Friday it's mostly dinner time and some lunchtime data. Okay. Now, if you want it, okay, you could add row. Okay, for row, I will use the gender color. Okay, you can see. So each column is for a day of the week, and each row is for a gender. So first row is for male, and second row is for female. Okay, so we have much more segregated data, much more granular data. Okay. Now, what I want to show you is, look, here both are continuous variables, right? Uh, in X and Y direction, you actually can use uh, one categorical variable as well. Like I'm using size. You can see size is a categorical variable, but you need to be careful. I can use size, but I cannot use day or time or sex or smoker for directly uh, as one side or X or Y direction variable, okay? Because they're string values. If I have to use them, I have to convert them in numeric values and then I can use it. All right, LM plot does not take any categorical variables that are not in numeric form. All right, so here, look at it. So we have size and you can see that it's right on the straight line, right? Which is expected because in uh, size, we have only one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so, uh, and uh, in, tip, in tips, uh, they vary. So we have these straight lines. And if you want, you can actually use the jitter option, okay, like x jitter, 0 0.15, okay, oh, sorry, I have to put a comma. Look, 0 0.15 or let's put 0 0.2 actually. Okay, if I put 0 0.2, what happens? Look, these are all right on the straight line. Here I used a jitter parameter. So what it did when I put x jitter 0.2, it just shake and it shaked a little bit. The data is not on straight line, not, not on a cylinder anymore. Like if you take a wider cylinder and shake it, so you will that's the jitter plot. Okay. So in LM plot, we could use the jitter option, but I have a separate video on jitter plot as well. I have the link in the description box below. Please feel free to check. So the reason we use jitter parameter is, first of all, it gives you a different view. Instead of right, just the straight line, you have a little different view. That one optional parameter, optional thing, I should say. The, the main reason I like this option is, look, when it's a straight line, the data can, the dots can be, overlapping and you may not know how much data actually going behind so when you shake it a little bit you actually see the amount of data okay you can actually can get better idea of how much data is going behind that straight line all right control c i will put control b so i am just putting it in a variable p okay now p dot set axis uh, oh sorry set axis labels okay now i will just work on this labels a little bit size tip okay you can see the size and tip i am just writing it in the proper case okay dot Fig dot subclass adjust. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do? Look at it. The in between this uh, rows, we don't have enough space. I think it will look nice if we have a little more space. So I will add h space 
zero point two. Okay. Oh, sorry, it exists. So you can see we have some extra space in between rows compared to this. We have some extra space here. Okay, if you want, you can have more space. Okay, look at it. And if I wanted, I could have extra space in between columns as well. For that, I have to put W space 0 0.2. And you can see that we have some extra space in between columns. All right. Also, if you want it, you can also set the X ticks and Y ticks, okay? And uh, the limit, X limit and Y limit, X limit, 0 to 7, okay? And Y name, 0 to uh, 11. Okay, let's see. Oh, sorry, you have to add a dot here. So you can see that we put extra limit, but anyway, it doesn't show much difference, but only here we have some extra space. Here is right on the dot on six, and we have some extra space in the horizontal direction. And if you want, you can also add the X ticks and Y ticks explicitly. X ticks, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. And uh, sorry, why it takes two, four, uh, or maybe instead of two, four, four, eight, twelve. Okay, instead of eleven, let's put twelve. And let's see. Here it is. We have some extra space on top, but it looks like the extra space is a little bit too much. I probably wouldn't use that much space. 8 and 10, or 8 and 10. You can do that as well. You can see we have 4, 8, and 10, 1, 2, 7. So this is just for demonstration purpose. I thought the X takes and the Y takes, uh, we already had it right. We didn't need to, but I just wanted to demonstrate it here. All right. So that's all for LMplot today. I hope you are going to use it in your projects. And if you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.